Should the US ban TikTok? What is the argument for it? What is the argument against it? And how will my generation react if TikTok is banned? Now, the bill introduced by Congress is a little more nuanced than most people think, so I'm going to try to break it down to the best of my ability and frame it through a Gen Z lens. On this vote, the yeas are 352, the nays are 65. And despite being in one of the most divided times in American history, where it seems like the two sides really can't come together and agree on anything, the House passed this bill with an overwhelming majority of 352 to 65. All right, firstly, let me lay out all of the major pieces so we're on the same page. We have ByteDance, which is a Chinese internet technology company that was founded in 2012 and is hosted out of Beijing. They own TikTok, they host TikTok, and they can decide what TikTok pushes to people's feed. On the other hand, we have the bill that was passed by the House today, which is called the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act. Now, the intention of this bill isn't to outright ban TikTok from the App Store, but it's to force ByteDance to sell TikTok to a non-Chinese subsidiary, preferably one run out of America so we can ease these national security concerns. TikTok would not be removed from the App Store unless ByteDance refuses to sell it. Now, in order to be completely transparent, I will say I've made money from TikTok over the past year, but I am still of the opinion that ByteDance needs to sell TikTok. Allowing ByteDance to have control over TikTok at such a crucial moment in American history is like allowing the Soviet Union to have control over CNN during the Cold War. They have a direct line to hundreds of millions of Americans. They can feed them any sort of information. And to take it a step further, imagine that version of CNN that is made to show every single user something different depending on their algorithm that day. I won't even mention the data collecting. That is besides the point. First of all, this is not a ban on TikTok. I'm a grandmother of teenagers. I understand the entertainment value, the educational value, the communication value, the business value for some business on this. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Now, before I provide the arguments of my Gen Z peers, I just want to say we have direct verified evidence that the CCP calls up ByteDance and tells them exactly what to boost and what to suppress on TikTok. We can even look at the statistics of what trends on Instagram versus TikTok, and you'll see that Instagram allows people to talk about Tiananmen Square or the Uyghur genocide, but you can't find anything about that on TikTok. In fact, you'll get banned and suppressed if you try to talk about Tiananmen Square. Now, I just want you to imagine for a moment a Gen Zer who is already skeptical, who is already disillusioned with our institutions and think that the U.S. government is intent on diminishing their freedoms and suppressing their voices. Now, they could have gotten this idea from TikTok in the first place, but a bill like this only serves to reinforce their beliefs. Now, I also hear a lot of Gen Zers give the slippery slope argument, which is actually addressed in the bill, but they think that this bill will only work to diminish our freedom of expression and cut off an avenue that we can use to be creative. And I have a few thoughts on that. Firstly, I think it's important to differentiate between the protection of free speech and the regulation of platforms that might pose an actual security risk because this bill targets the applications controlled by foreign adversaries. It does not target the content or the style or the silliness of the videos that we can make. We can still make as many short form videos as we want. And secondly, I think we need to consider the broader context and why it's so important to safeguard our personal and national security at this very moment in time. For example, in 2016, it's been proven that Russian interference helped Donald Trump win. They know he's a wild card who is more likely to pull us out of NATO and more likely to isolate ourselves from allies, which only benefits countries like Russia and China. So when we have Russia interfering in the 2016 election, then off the back of that interfering in the 2020 election in an even bigger way, using things like Facebook to disseminate information, then we obviously have a problem. Ever since the Cold War, Russia has been amping up its psyops and trying to get in the minds of American people because they know that you can destabilize a country from within way easier than launching a ground invasion. So my message to my generation is this. America is not perfect, but we cannot start ceding all of this ground to countries like China and Russia who genuinely want to destabilize us from within. Because if we work hard now, if we go out and mobilize and vote, we can mold our institutions to be exactly how we want them to be when we're handed the keys. Then we can easily pass stuff regarding climate change, regarding abortion, regarding gun laws. But if we give that up right now and let foreign adversaries or even domestic adversaries like Donald Trump, take that away from us, we will not have institutions to take over in the future. I believe that this bill can cause future problems. It's opening Pandora's box, and I'm opposed to this bill. Most Americans don't trust the United States government because of our experience dealing with it. 
Never forget that the United States government also was the one that provided the Russia hoax to Americans. I know this isn't a good way to build a coherent worldview, but the fact that Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump have flipped positions and all of a sudden oppose this bill raises some red flags in my opinion. Just general, I tell you what, he has a stance on China which is a country that's just ripping our heart out. I mean, we just do nothing to protect ourselves. Ties? Where are the ties they made? These are too. beautiful ties. They are great ties. The ties are made in where? China? China. Ties are made in China. Now, maybe Trump and MAGA are just taking the reactive stance and opposing anything that the Biden administration tries to pass, or maybe Donald Trump realizes how much he actually benefits from foreign influence, and maybe he realizes that he would have lost in 2016 if it weren't for foreign countries boosting his message and trying to get him elected. Take a look at this clip of a cybersecurity expert. Michael, is TikTok a security threat? Well, I think it's fair to say that any time you're doing business with a company that's under substantial influence of a foreign adversary, whether that's China, Russia, it's North Korea, you need to consider the security risk to government, the security risk to corporations and, and general citizens. So we know, obviously, in this case here, uh, China China uh, has been carrying out attacks for, for many years. Uh, and some of those attacks, what we saw in our report, China Nexus adversaries were the most active in 2022. They've targeted all global industries, all sectors all around the world. Uh, they targeted 39 global industry sectors, 20 geo regions. Uh, and we think that uh, trend will continue throughout 2023. So uh, every organization must remain vigilant uh, against cyber threat, not only from China, but from any country. Russia was obviously a little bit different. Uh, one of the things that we saw with uh, with Russia and, and uh, groups linked to to Russia um, before uh, the the kinetic aspect of the the Russia Ukraine war, we saw cyber activity really scale up very very quickly. So to wrap this up, if this bill passes through the Senate, then ByteDance will have six months to sell TikTok, and the Chinese Foreign Ministry has already called this an act of bullying. You can guess why. But I think the best way to approach this is to have empathy for Gen Z or people that might be older or younger that use TikTok. There is no need to be condescending or demeaning or make fun of people for using TikTok. I mean, if they get all of their politics from TikTok, that's not good. But we need to have an approach where we help them understand the foreign influence that they don't quite see at this moment. And a scary problem that we may run into with right-leaning people and very far-left people alike is that they actually want to see U.S. institutions destabilized. I've had people on the right and the far left tell me, good, let Russia control the information. Who cares? America sucks anyways, which is a function of this propaganda. You can tell when somebody wants the U.S. institutions to be stabilized, and you can tell when they got it from TikTok which only builds onto my argument. My name is Adam Mockler. If you made it this far, leave a blue heart in the comment and have a great day.